This graphic demonstrates the general scheme of making a panoramic radiograph. An X-ray source and receptor rotate around the patient's head. The X-rays are collimated into a narrow vertical beam at the source and again at the receptor. The receptor moves past the collimator during the exposure cycle, acquiring sequential vertical images of the patient's jaws. When viewing a panoramic radiograph, you will recognize that superimpositions from the contralateral side of the jaw are not readily apparent. A key concept in panoramic imaging is the formation of the image layer or focal cruft. By moving the source and the receptor, we generate a zone of image sharpness. This zone is referred to as the image layer or focal trough. Objects that are located within this image layer cast sharp images. The closer an anatomic structure is located to the center of the layer, the more clearly it is imaged on the panoramic radiograph. To understand the principles of panoramic imaging, let's consider the illustration of a rotating disk. In this setup, X-rays are collimated at the source and immediately before they strike the receptor. Objects on the disk are imaged as they rotate past the collimator. The receptor also moves linearly past the collimator during the exposure cycle. First, let's consider the situation where the receptor moves past the collimator at the same speed as objects A, B and C move through the beam. Images of objects A, B and C will be recorded when they are closest to the receptor. Note that in these positions, structures D, E and F which are located on the opposite side of the disk will be superimposed over the images of structures A, B and C. Now let's consider the geometry for the image projections for these structures. When structures A, B and C are being imaged, the source object distance is long and the object receptor distance is short. With this geometry, image magnification and unsharpness are minimized and thus structures A, B and C will cast sharp images. In contrast, note that when structures D, E and F pass through the beam, the source object distance is short and the object receptor distance is long. This makes the images of structures D, E and F magnified and markedly unsharp. So principle number one of panoramic imaging, structures closer to the receptor cast sharp images whereas structures closer to the source cast magnified and blurred images. Now let's take a closer look of image formation as structures move past the beam. In the presented scenario, the receptor moves past the collimator at the same speed as objects located on the outer edge of the disk. Now let's consider an object located on the outer edge of the disk, represented here by the circle. Due to the coordinated movement of the disk and the receptor, the image of the circle is cast on the same location on the receptor through the exposure cycle. Next, let's consider a structure that is located away from the outer edge of the disk, represented here by a triangle. Note that the image of the triangle is not cast on the same location on the receptor through the exposure cycle and thus appears as a blurred horizontal streak. Next, let's consider the structures D, E and F located on the opposite side of the disk and represented here by a square. Note that these structures are imaged in the opposite direction and that their images are markedly magnified and blurred. A key element of the image layer formation is the speed of the receptor relative to the objects that are being imaged. When the receptor is moved at the same speed as structures A, B and C move past the collimator, the length of the registered image allows the structures A, B and C to be represented with minimal horizontal distortion. In contrast, note that the same length of the registered image represents structures X, Y and Z with marked horizontal distortion. Next, let's modulate the system and reduce the receptor speed. Note that the length of the registered image is shorter and in this case will more accurately represent the horizontal dimensions of structures X, Y and Z. The images of structures A, B and C are also recorded on the shorter length and thus are horizontally distorted and unsharp. So principle number two of panoramic imaging, the image layer can be changed by varying the speed of the receptor relative to the beam. This holds true for film and storage phosphor receptors where there is a physical movement of the receptor past the collimator. In CCD-based panoramic machines, a linear array of detectors is affixed behind the collimator and does not move during the exposure. In these units, changes in the receptor speed are simulated by varying the rate of sampling of the CCD receptor. 
So to accomplish panoramic imaging, we image the object with a collimated beam. Structures that are within the image layer will cast sharp images. And we can change the location of the image layer by varying the speed of the receptor relative to the beam. Note that the same objectives can be achieved by rotating the X-ray source and receptor around the stationary object. Next, let's apply these principles to imaging the jaws. Note that the single center of rotation does not create an image layer that matches the curved shape of the jaws. Early designs of panoramic machines used two centers of rotation. The first imaging arc encompassed the condyle through the canine of the contralateral side. The rotation center would then shift laterally with re-imaging of the anterior sextant and the contralateral jaw. Modern panoramic machines shape the image layer using moving centers of rotation and by varying the relative receptor speed through the exposure cycle. Many manufacturers offer options for different image layers to accommodate jaws of varying shapes and sizes. To facilitate patient positioning into the image layer, panoramic machines are equipped with laser lights that guide patient positioning. Based on the projection geometry, there's three broad categories of images that we should consider. Real images, double images, and ghost images. The first distinction is between real and ghost images. And this distinction is based on the position of the object relative to the X-ray source, the rotation center, and the receptor. Objects located between the rotation center and the receptor cast real images. Whereas the images of objects between the rotation center and the X-ray source are referred to as ghost images. When projecting real images, only those structures that are located within the image layer will cast sharp images, whereas the real images of structures outside that image layer will be less sharp. This graphic demonstrates the anatomic zone of structures that will be projected as real images. And again remember that only those structures within the image layer will cast sharp images. There is a zone that lies posterior to the rotation center where the objects are intercepted by the beam twice. Images of these structures are seen on both sides of the film. Anatomic structures that cast double images include the epiglottis, the hyoid bone, the airway, and the cervical spine. Also note that due to the projection geometry, double images appear as mirror images. This graphic demonstrates the anatomic zone that casts double images. Objects that lay between the X-ray source and the rotation center cast a ghost image. Note that the ghost image is cast on the opposite side of the true anatomic location of the object. Because the object is located outside the image layer and very close to the X-ray source, ghost images are blurred and markedly magnified. When making a panoramic radiograph, the beam is angulated relative to the horizontal plane with a slightly upward inclination. This angulation causes the ghost image of a structure to be cast higher up than its real image. Interpretation of these ghost images can be tricky. For example, in this radiograph, we see a radiopacity over the right maxillary tuberosity. However, this radiopacity is a ghost image of the earring from the opposite side. Note that the ghost image is blurred and magnified, cast on the opposite side, and cast higher up relative to its real image. And when you are viewing a panoramic radiograph, remember that anatomic structures from one side cast ghost images on the opposite side. And that emphasizes the need for you to be familiar with panoramic radiologic anatomy. This graphic demonstrates the zone of anatomic structures that cast ghost images. Note that the structures are located posterior to the rotation center and that the teeth and dentoalveolar region do not produce ghost images. To be adept at panoramic radiological interpretation, you should be familiar with the zones of anatomic structures that cause real, double and ghost images. In this graphic, those zones are superimposed over a CT scan, allowing you to visualize dynamically the structures that are located within those different zones. Modern panoramic machines provide options for different panoramic projections. Modifications to the standard projections are created by changing the path of the rotation center as a consequence, the zones where real, double and ghost images are produced will also vary. Be aware of this when you interpret panoramic radiographs that have been made with non-standard projections. Of note, these non-standard projections are of value in specific situations. The orthogonal projection, for example, allows us to visualize the teeth with less horizontal overlap. And as you can note with the changing zones in the shadow reduction projection, there is less superimposition of structures over the jaw. When interpreting a panoramic radiograph, it is important that you be familiar with the principles of image layer formation and the principles of image formation of real, double and ghost images. 